Hello, uh, welcome to Coffee with Pastor Dan. Uh, for those who were watching last week, you'll recognize this as part two uh, with my very special guest, uh, Carol Becker. Um, and what you saw last week, uh, we were talking about grief, especially grief during the pandemic. Um, but uh, in this one, we're gonna turn our eyes maybe a little bit to the past at first uh, and talk about uh, I don't know what you call this, maybe the evolution of the church, um, how, what we have seen, especially you have seen over the years, changes in the church, what things um, uh, have come to fruition, and what things you think that the church is called to become uh, going forward, given our trajectory and where Christ has led us. So you get to be Nostradamus of the ELCA. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> God bless the ELCA. <laughs> well, um, uh, in, in our little break there, we were talking about uh, your own past. Uh, so um, let me ask the hard, this hard-hitting question. Uh, are you a cradle Lutheran? I, well, yes, I am a cradle Lutheran. So where were you born? I was born in Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, beautiful Buffalo, New York. Yes. <laughs> Grew up in a, a neighborhood that housed a Missouri Synod Lutheran Church, and they were uh, a wonderful place for me to begin uh, learning about Christianity. And I have to say, by the way, I'm guessing the time period, but during that time period, a lot of the different groups of Lutherans were heavily regional, right, as opposed to sort of doctrinal. Right. Oh, yeah. So you were kind of in a Missouri Senate area, right? I was in the Missouri Senate area. They were uh, kind enough to me and my family as uh, the first Lutheran school entered into my life and into the city of Buffalo. Missouri yeah. Senate has always been fantastic with schools. With schools, yeah. 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 And so my church um, gave me a scholarship to attend school at First Lutheran School of Buffalo, New York. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that was a wonderful opportunity. And I just um, fell in love, actually, with all that the church offered to me personally. So what has been uh, your Lutheran trajectory? What, what, how did, how, how's that journey been over the years then? So uh, how long were you in Missouri and uh, what, 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 what made you shift? Well, I was Missouri Synod Lutheran for a long, long time and then uh, moved to Phoenix, Arizona and found another Missouri Synod Lutheran church, which I thought was quite wonderful. What, uh, give me a decade here. Uh, 19, I can't tell you the, what decade, let's see, 1978. So. Well, 78, so still the Missouri Senate, the American Lutheran Church, and the Lutheran Church in America have many partnerships going on between the three at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I, I'm with you. Anyway, it was at that time that uh, participating in worship there and understanding what some of the um, theological questions were that were arising and how churches was, churches were wanting to uh, make decisions about those things. I, I knew in my heart then that uh, Missouri Synod uh, Church wasn't responsive to what I might think might be a better plan. What were, so, the, what were the issues on the table that were of concern to you? Well, uh, certainly the ordination of females. Um, so the LCA and the ALC had already started doing that. Is that correct? The ELCA. Well, that. the ELCA formed in uh, 88, I believe. So this is still okay. 10 years before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah. they were already ordained. My history starts around that time. Women. Yeah. Uh, and... I didn't know that, but when I learned it, I just, I remember thinking back to years ago, I thought, wow, if only that could have been true for me as a younger person, I would love to have uh, worked towards being an ordained minister or having- well, you, 
you are a wonderful pastoral person, but to, to see you as an ordained minister would have been a joy. Oh, thank you. Uh, um, I, uh, I just, I love being in the church. I love being with the people. And I, I, uh, the thought of my being a deaconess at the time is what I would have been allowed to, to be in the Missouri Synod um, made me much more of a secretary. Oh, gotcha. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, anyway, uh, I don't know, I don't want to take all this time to tell you about that evolution, but I decided at that time that I was going to maybe try something outside of the Lutheran Church. Mm. And my little grandson and I started looking for churches together. He was five, said he wanted to go to Sunday school. Anyway, we looked at all the different churches we could, and finally, and I passed All Saints Lutheran all the time down 7th Street, and I thought, okay, we're finally going to go back there. We're not finding something that works for us, and uh, so it was so good. Andrew went to Sunday school that day, and I came in to worship, and I thought, oh, I'm home. Uh, this is where I belong, and after worship, uh, Andrew kept saying to me as we did our search, he'd say, I don't think we want to stay here. I, and that was every week. I, I don't think we want to stay here. Anyway, when I was done worshiping, Andrew came running across the courtyard with his papers in his hand. And he, he says, Nana, Nana, we don't have to look anymore. We're sitting <laughs> right here. <laughs> What's that scripture verse and a little child shall lead them? Yes. Yes, it was just wonderful that we both agreed on that. And I just uh, felt like I had come home. So. Um, and then you you entered into a period where you had, were very engaged. Now, a lot of people don't realize, but uh, that there are different groupings or regions that we call synods. Uh, mm -hmm. And each one has a bishop. So you worked in the bishop's office. I did. Uh, for how many years? Six. Six years. All right. What did it l look like in your understanding of the, of the ELCA shift as you kind of looked at it on a level that I've never worked on? What does it look like when you, you're, you're probably in contact with a dozen churches a day? Oh, at least. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, my responsibilities included um, being that person who um, interviews pastors who are looking for a new congregation and finding them a, a new home. Yeah, it's and a very big role. Yes. Yeah. I think the one that was bigger than that was I have, had to do a lot of conflict management with the bishop. And so, but you learn a lot that way and it yeah. was a good experience. But, um, but, Controversial at that time certainly was the inclusion of gay pastors and the um, roadblocks that they had to overcome and during that time. And uh, so there was, was that always- Personally, was that a hard issue for you or did you have a, 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 a view of that to start with? I think I had a view of that to start with. I didn't- um, I was very willing to listen to the other side and to hear uh, what their thoughts were and the kinds of things that they were talking about, especially this whole um, panel of people that participated in that process. I even got invited one day to go and sit in on it. And that was uh, amazing to me because it was both sides were certainly represented and and it was so hard because people had so much passion around that issue. Yeah. And I and they sat there as they talked and discussed and and they cried. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, it, it was just so touching. I was so glad to see the sensitivity and the compassion uh, and the decisions that came out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Although no major decision came out of that, they couldn't agree to disagree or to agree. Yes. Um, so, so it took a little while longer for yeah. new decisions to be made in that regard. Yeah, yeah. What What do you think it, what does it mean for you that now uh, 
All Saints has joined in in saying that, yes, our pastors can do uh, uh, same gender marriages. What, mm -hmm. Personally, what does that mean for you as a as a as a lifelong Lutheran? I I always look at that as a person who who would I be to judge who who can uh, participate in uh, in what is God's mm. uh, and I I think to me it just means that people have to grow you you have to uh, we need to understand that um, we do have gay lesbian and lesbian people different uh, different genders and and that all of those people that I knew I loved they were wonderful people and so I was very much then you know in favor of the the new rules that were being formed by the ELCA in that regard and you know, you, and the you, you fact that, word I think in there that struck me that I hadn't think about that, that this is in some ways a an issue of humility Mm -hmm. you know, of, of making sure that we are not so certain that we supersede being open to what God and the community is doing. We can't be so certain. We have to look back at what, what God has declared. And uh, and I, I think there's no other way to do that. We have to see what does God have to say about that. If we can find that and people interpret things differently, and I understand that, but I think about the whole issue that was on the table for the ELCA more recently. Um, they're, they're just, well, I remember if you want to go back to when my time at the Synod office, yeah. they were talking about um, whether or not we could ordain a gay person and whether that person could be married. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, I lost my train of thought. No, that's, you were talking <laughs> about like, going back to when you were at the Senate office with that. Yeah, um, we had people calling on the phone members of congregations where there was a gay pastor calling and and crying you are not going to take our pastor away from us we <laughs> love our pastor and uh, uh that was the biggest reaction we had was from those congregations where they knew they had a gay pastor it was no secret and the pastor was uh loving them yeah. and uh caring for them. I, I kind of, I mean, um, and I don't mean this to be in a um, too broad of a sense, but a lot of those pastors knew that there would be a harder path for them. Mm -hmm. It would be easier for them to be an accountant, you know, uh, that their, their life wouldn't always be under a microscope. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I'm not saying in the future, it won't be this way, but uh, there was, there's a certain sense of like, man, to be a gay pastor prior to this, you had to be stone cold called to be a mm -hmm. pastor and committed mm -hmm. to do this work. It wasn't a convenient job. <laughs> That's so true. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to, to just look beyond all of that and say, this is the work I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I always had a lot of respect for, um, well, let's face it, you know, a uh, middle-aged heterosexual white guy, you know, it's it's not rocking anybody's boat that I'm a pastor, you know. Uh, right. uh, and so uh, if, I, if I'm not careful, I do it just because I can do it. When you got somebody who's swimming upstream, you know that they're called. And I've always mm -hmm. respected that. Yeah. yeah. Good perspective. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let us put our eyes towards the future. What would be just an amazing thing yet that we could be as All Saints and as the ELCA uh, as we're looking ahead for the decades to come? You know, that's such a good question, Pastor Dan, and I'm thinking about that too as we 
start to gather back together as a congregation and and wondering i don't think we're going to be exactly the same no yeah. i think just by circumstance there will be change yeah and um i i expect some more open-mindedness i i'm hoping uh, but again i think you just have to go back to what does god ask us to do and we know what god asks us to do and so i'm kind of hoping that um we can do a little bit more outside of the building oh amen amen all saints does a lot of that i'm very proud of what we do there uh but but i think it should be more natural and not an event it should be more regular i, I think you know i mentioned a long time ago to a couple of pastors who kind of said well, maybe not, but I said, why can't we just close the church on Sunday and but have some preparation for that? We will all have decided on an activity or a ministry that could be performed that day in the community. And then we could all come back for coffee and donuts or something. And maybe everybody doesn't go that day. Those are the people that prepare the coffee and donuts. And next time, those people go out and do the ministry. I have visited several congregations, and that is their exact uh, pattern. Uh, and, well, there's one last I visited was a, a church in downtown uh, downtown Seattle. They were in downtown, and mm -hmm. they were committed to the community of the downtown. Uh, and uh, so they kind of rotated. There were some Sundays, like two Sundays a month, they were more like a traditional worship. One that was more like a community Bible study with with children around mm -hmm. and uh the other the fourth sunday was uh they still had times where they gathered and they prayed but their primary interaction for that day was to go out and serve in the neighborhood around the church and mm -hmm. and they they drew people who lived near downtown which were often a lot of young people that were um uh you know working for like amazon or something like that mm -hmm. but wanted to not just you know, of frequent the restaurants of downtown. They wanted to be part of a community and not just visit a community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah. So you you are uh, what you are speaking of uh, uh, is is becoming actually a, a pattern that some people are developing. Well, that's really good to know. I think that's uh -huh. just uh, uh, people need to see Christ. Yeah. And if you can be that light in the community, then yeah. that's where we should be. Yeah. Well, uh, once again, uh, this one may have been longer than our last one. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? Maybe we should go for another four of these. <laughs> I'll give you a break. <laughs> this can uh, be a daily. <laughs> this has been so generous, and um, uh, I'm glad we could capture this so that others could join in on the conversation. Uh, once again, uh, for people who missed last week, uh, let's give another little plug uh, for uh, the grief support group. Uh, and when's, when uh, do we have a scheduled time? For we don't starting? yet. We're okay. still wanting to bring that to you and to Pastor Kristen and and to see, you know, uh, check not just that we're able to gather on Sundays, but that we can, uh, for ministry purposes, have different opportunities too, because some people can come in the evening, some people can come right. in the afternoon. And of course, we've got this wonderful news this week from the, uh, well, last week for people who are watching it. But we had this news that uh, that uh, with the new CDC regulations that we can open up a lot more events on on campus, uh, and that's just great news too. So uh, that's not going to be a hindrance at all. And uh, so um, you know, in terms of scheduling, but it, people can. This is the time to contact now. So we might be driven a bit by people who are contacting us and saying, "I want to have a group now." Right. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. right. Uh, they can contact you, or they can just call the church office. Right. They can call the church office and the, somebody at the church office will provide my telephone number and I'll be happy to call them or they can, uh, yeah, I, or they'll call me and let me know who's called and I will call <laughs> Good, <them>. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just the better way to do it rather than um, trying to share a telephone number with how many people will be watching this. So, right. uh, well, I think uh, 
Anyway. I think with that, we will say goodbye to everybody. And thank you again, Carol, for your, your not only your ministry here at All Saints, uh, but um, uh, but your your role in building uh, the church that I love, the ELCA. Uh, and I thank you for your leadership over the years. Thanks for the opportunity, Pastor Dan. All right, let's say goodbye. Night, night.